Hello and welcome to a special edition of The Ticket. I'm Tracy Holmes. The countdown is on to the start of the postponed Tokyo Olympics. The Japanese capital is in the grip of a fourth wave of the pandemic and remains in a state of emergency. Despite overwhelming opposition on the home front, the International Olympic Committee says the Games will go ahead. When are the Games due to start and could they still be cancelled? Organisers insist the Olympic cauldron will be lit on Friday the 23rd of July. But many doctors aren't convinced. In May, there were more than 150,000 cases of COVID across Japan and over 2,700 deaths. It's going to cost lives having the Olympics at the moment. We are calling for the Tokyo Games to be cancelled. A recent poll found that 83% of people in Japan agree. But Olympic officials say the show must go on. We have put in place comprehensive COVID-19 countermeasures. What anti-COVID measures are in place? International fans are banned from travelling to Japan, but tens of thousands of athletes and officials will still be arriving from overseas. All Australian athletes will be vaccinated before they arrive and six high-risk countries, including India, have promised organisers they will do the same. We already know over 75% of the, the population in that village will be covered and there's great efforts to even increase that above 80%. What will life be like for the athletes? Athletes won't be able to enter the Olympic Village until four days before their event and will have to leave Tokyo within 48 hours of competing. But some, like Australia's softball team, have already arrived in Japan to prepare and they'll spend several weeks in their own bubble. At this stage it looks like we'll be basically inside our hotel, um, going from hotel to training park to play and then back again. Athletes will be tested for COVID each day and thousands will miss out on attending the opening and closing ceremonies. We have to be ready to do what it takes and I know that's what our athletes are up for. Will there be spectators? Before the pandemic, organisers were hoping to sell 7.8 million tickets. As it stands, they've sold 4.5 million. But there's no guarantee ticket holders will get to take their seats. Organisers are hoping to run venues at 50% capacity. But they're also considering a more restrictive cap of 50% or 5,000 spectators, whichever is lower. And they reserve the right to have no spectators at all if the situation worsens. So we've tried to put those scenarios into place so that we've kind of already done it. It's not going to be something daunting. Um, and it's going to be a lot easier to hear each other on the field, I know that. <laughs> Will the games be safe? Organisers have been hosting a range of test events in Japan, while World Athletics recently staged a successful meet in Poland. We had 700 athletes over, well, 31 countries and not a single positive test. But the scale of the Olympics is much bigger. Since COVID-19 first emerged, there has not been such a dangerous gathering of people coming together in one place from around the world. At the end of May, only 2.5% of people in Japan were fully vaccinated. Japan's government is trying to rapidly lift that rate. And the early signs at newly opened mass vaccination hubs are promising. But how safe will the games be come July? That depends on who you talk to. If you want to give the variants a wonderful opportunity to spread globally and infect and kill a lot more people, the best single thing you can do is move people across the globe, across borders from all around the world and put them in one spot for a while. There are no perfect solutions uh, and there will be big, big challenges, but the systems that we've now got are tried and tested. I genuinely believe it can be delivered safely and securely. The key Olympic stakeholders are all sporting a brave face, but the Games will be compromised. Joining us now from Tokyo is Hiroshi Takeuchi from Kyoto News Service, Dr David Hughes, the Chief Medical Officer for the Australian Olympic team, and Kayla George from the Opals basketball team. Thank you all for your time. Hiroshi, I'll start with you because we heard the Chief Doctor in Japan issuing a warning saying it's not normal to be hosting an Olympic and Paralympic Games in the middle of a pandemic. Was he suggesting that the Games at this late stage should be cancelled? I myself 
uh, doubt why uh, Dr. Omi uh, particularly selected that word of not normal, uh, because the last three weeks, the positive case, the numbers are declining, and the yes, uh, as you mentioned, we are the under state of emergency, but not the total lockdown. The museums and department stores, the people go and enjoy what they want to do. And the baseball, softball is running on and with, with spectators. And uh, yes, it's, it's not normal, you know, uh, to welcome the full capacity of the stadium. Uh, very few people expect that, you know, it's a, we should compromise and uh, uh, we are ready uh, to sacrifice ourselves, you know, to limit the numbers of spectators and the, uh, we already, you know, uh, took, a, you know, appropriate measure. Uh, to lead the successful games under the restricted condition. David, you've got a very big team that you're in charge of. How confident are you yes. that safe and secure games can go ahead? Um, I feel very uh, confident. I think TOCOG and the IOC have done a tremendous job. And, um, you know, I think we have to remember that during the pandemic, uh, we've had lots of people saying lots of sporting uh, events shouldn't go ahead, including the Australian Open, the NRL, the AFL. Um, and what we've had to do is work uh, with uncertainty and put things in place to minimise risk. And I really think that the uh, COVID safe plans that TOCOG and the ISC have put in place and also those that we've put uh, around the Australian team in particular, including um, getting uh, pretty much the full team vaccinated. We're looking at over 95% vaccination of the Australian Olympic team and 100% vaccination of the Paralympic team. Um, I think uh, that it, this can be held safely, but we, we cannot be complacent and we will not be complacent and we'll be making sure we dot the I's and cross the T's in terms of safety. Kayla, how, how did these conversations impact the athlete who have to focus so strictly on their mission, which is to play, but are you conscious of all of this chatter going on around you and behind you? Yeah, it's, it's certainly um, been a challenging lead up, especially early last year. Um, and, you know, listening to a lot of the, the media and the, the possible cancellations and the postponements, it's certainly been hard um, as an athlete to train when you're not really sure what you're training for um, or when your event will happen, if at all. And so it's certainly been challenging. But I feel like as an athlete um, that we have had to remain focused and set new goals and really just stay within our bubble um, and train as if the games are going ahead because if you train any other way, you're not really training properly. So to prepare for an event... Um, such as the Olympics, you really have to stay focused on, you know, the goal of going to the Olympics and hope that that's, that's what happens. So it's, it's not really been that different except trying to just really have some horse blinkers on and, and um, focus on, on the task at hand and not so much the noise around us. Hiroshi, what about the news we heard of the volunteers? 10,000 of the 80,000 have so far withdrawn. Is that going to have a dramatic impact? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, the games of volunteer uh, in total, eighty thousand, and now ten thousand people withdrew, and but still seventy thousand in you know, a games of volunteer. It's I think the sufficient numbers of the volunteer to support the games. David, can I speak to you about contingencies? What happens if there is yes. an outbreak in the village, the Olympic village? Will the Australian team on mass? be flown home? Well, uh, I think there, there are so, so many different potential um, situations that, are, we, you know, I think we just have to be flexible. We understand, we're having discussions with lots of uh, um, other government agencies um, to cover contingencies. Um, I think we can feel reasonably confident that there won't be a major outbreak in the village, given that 
Um, many countries now are going to be vaccinated, which we weren't expecting a few months ago. And um, despite the fact that we've got full vaccination, the plan is still for daily testing in the Olympic Village, you know, testing pre-departure, testing on arrival at the airport, daily right. testing. In, in many sporting events around the world at the moment, Tracy, including the NBA, the revised NBA, um, and the, uh, the French Open that's been run at the moment, those who are fully vaccinated or who have acquired immunity are actually not required to uh, undergo as rigorous testing as they were in the past. But, you know, um, the, the uh, organising committee in Tokyo is uh, pushing on with daily testing. So it's almost a belt and braces approach that they've got a large proportion of the uh, Olympic contingent vaccinated, fully vaccinated, um, and yet there still will be daily testing. So I, I feel confident that um, if th there may be some cases in the village, but I, I believe that will be able to be controlled. And I certainly think within the Australian team, we will be able to keep people safe. Kayla, it's going to be a very different Games, no doubt. Do you think medals this time round will not so much go to those showing physical prowess, but those that show a mental strength and a resilience above others? Yeah, I certainly think that the most successful athletes and teams during this Games will be the, one that'll, the ones that will be able to handle the challenges, the differences and ultimately, you know, how tough it will be playing in front of no friends, no family, um, the bubble life in the village or, you know, it's, it's a semi-bubble life, I guess. It's going to be very restricted compared to previous games. So I think the ones that can really handle that the best, I think, will be the most successful for sure. Hiroshi, the Japanese public, we know, overwhelmingly don't want it to go ahead at the moment. I think uh, another postponement is out of the question because of the tens of thousands of contracts that go into organising an Olympic right. Games. Do you imagine once the Games begin, will that national mood shift? Uh, yes, absolutely. But, you know, the Australian softball team arrived the, the other uh, the day before yes, uh, yesterday, uh, Tuesday, and uh, so uh, their, you know, smiling faces already, you know, made some people change their mind or mood, and ah, the games is coming, and uh, the torch relay uh, domestically, you know, is going on in every day. Um, I think before. The, you know, 23rd of the July, uh, the people's, you know, mood uh, will be changing and the uh, vaccination just started. Uh, but within this month, uh, 50 million, you know, shot will be made. And in July also, the pace of the vaccination, you know, uh, accelerated and the, the mood of the citizens will be, you know, shifting, I think. All right, very quickly, we're going to finish here, but I want one word from each of you. What are you most wary of and what are you most looking forward to? David. Uh, I'm most wary, of course, about uh, the safety of everybody involved. Um, but look, I'm really looking uh, forward to the to the Olympic spirit that I think is going to be, um, you know, it, we're going to see that increasing positivity just as we saw around the Australian Open as it got underway and people uh, in Japan and around the world will take great pride in the fact that we're able to hold an Olympics in these difficult circumstances. Hiroshi, most wary and most looking forward uh, to? Well, absolutely the, you know, contagions, contagious and the cases will be increased but the, you know, we are uh, a lots of sporting fun expected the great sporting event in Tokyo. Kayla? I think I'm most wary of uh, the dining hall as it's a pretty big touch point for all the athletes across the globe. Um, but I'm most excited about um, some of our new athletes, not just among the Opals, but um, first time Olympians that get to experience the Aussie spirit um, and just the, the Olympic experience itself, which is um, which is a pretty special one. Hiroshi, Kayla, David, thank you so much for your time today. And, of course, thank you for watching. I'm Tracy Holmes. See you next time.